All right, I'm here today with Vanel Zigpa, the founder of Abose Yokai Online. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, Vanel. Thank you for having me. And sponsoring us too. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're no. welcome. Yeah, yeah Vanel is taking care of us here, helping us to get the car back in shape, to get the mm. uh, electric motorbike back in shape. Thank you so much for this Our support. Pleasure. Our pleasure. I was just asking you what the name of your business means. Yeah. And Abose Yukai yeah. is the biggest spare parts market in Ghana. In Ghana, yes. All right, then let's tell us about your business. It's Abose Yukai Online. Yeah. What do, what does your business do? Okay, so um, basically, if you drive in Ghana, chances are you know Abose Yukai. Because um, if you need any spare parts for your vehicle, then you need to go to Abosokai to get your spare parts. And so we have people traveling all the way from the northern part of Ghana. In fact, from Ivory Coast, from Burkina Faso, from Togo, to come get spare parts from Abosokai. Wow. Yeah, so what we said was that, okay, why make everyone travel from wherever they are 500 miles away just to get spare parts? So we said that, okay, we are creating a marketplace. If you need spare parts, just go on to our online marketplace, purchase the parts, we'll get it to you wherever you are in the country, outside the country. And, and so basically we're just giving convenience to people in the automobile spare parts industry. Wow. Yeah. How did you come up with that idea? I mean, that is just <laughs> amazing. I can imagine the yeah. hassle of someone in Mali yeah. or Burkina Faso yeah. looking at a car saying, or a mechanic saying, I need this part and then I have to travel all the way to Ghana yeah. to get it. How did you come up with this idea? Um, so it was um, sort of not planned. This was how it happened. And so I have another business that imports vehicles into the country um, from auctions in the United States. And so basically, when the vehicles come in, some of them have problems. And so we get them fixed and then sell them, resell them. And so I had a team of a mechanic, a bodyworks guy, a sprayer, and all. And I realized that my mechanic kept on ripping me off. And so for Parts that should cost $100, I ended up paying $300 for it. Wow. And uh, it continued for some time. And I thought, oh, come on. I know there are people in my shoes who would want to have the price of spare parts, um, I mean, at the click of a button. And they would really want to know that, okay, this is the right quality I'm looking for. This is the right price I should buy it for. Yeah. And so that was basically how it started. So it was really by, by mistake, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. if I could put it that way. And so, yeah. So one day I just called my guy who was helping me with gardening in my house. I said, okay, this is what we want to do. Today, you are the first staff of Abosol Khan Online. And that was how it started. Basically. So you hired your gardener? Exactly. To, to be the first staff of Abosol Khan Online. And he's still a staff of Abosol Khan Online. Yeah, nice. that is uh, four years down the line. Okay, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you realize, okay, your mechanic is ripping you off. Yeah. He's charging extra and extra for spare parts that yeah. he is procuring exactly and adding in a huge margin yeah while well, you just want to work uh, on a on an eye to eye level with him exactly and then you hire your gardener what's the next step in the, in in making this uh, come together yeah so the next step was i created a facebook page um i was so kind of like i did some design myself um to be our banner page and our logo and um, i said okay so our page is up I started sponsoring the page to get traction yeah. and uh, basically I got him to go into the market to form alliances with the spare parts vendors and that was it. I could still remember the day we had our very first delivery <laughs> <sighs> and um, it was one custom officer from the city of Tema. He called and said, okay, I want a bumper for my car. And um, so we got the specification of the car, got him the bumper, delivered it all the way to Tema. You should see the joy on our faces after we did that very first delivery. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So 
in the beginning, basically, people find your Facebook page. They say, okay, I need this part, and you procure it for them. They don't have to travel, at all. but you deliver it to, to Tema. Yeah. And I guess they pay for the transportation and, exactly the so. and everything. Exactly so. Wow. So down the line, then um, we had our websites yeah. um, with uh, vendors loading their parts there. And we procured um, a vehicle. We procured some motorbikes to help with the delivery. Yeah. And boom. Wow, and now it works. It's working perfectly. Out. It works perfectly, not just for Ghanaians, but we have clients from all, I mean, some parts of Africa. So, as it stands now, we have clients coming in from Ivory Coast, patronizing our services from Nigeria, patronizing our services from Togo, and as far as Equatorial Guinea. Wow. Yeah. They all buy things that are actually there on the market and the vendors they yeah. upload to your platform exactly because you give them so much business now exactly yeah so we give them audience not just in ghana but across and the idea is to um possibly give them audience across the world wow yeah, yeah. wow and you started it with a facebook page it's something yeah. that i i find it very very amazing because oftentimes we think oh we need this we need to start with a big complicated shop system and mm. how can I get this up? But yeah. everyone can set up a Facebook page and and share that message through groups or uh, something else and yeah. put um, something a supply that is only there locally as yeah. it was in your case. Yeah. Bring that online and get that information and then share the pictures, right? Exactly. So yeah. it was that simple. Yes, yeah. just a simple Facebook page. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I think you know, people should really start thinking, okay, is there any way that I could start my business with a Facebook page? Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. It's, it's a good way to think. I yeah, mean, that yeah. could give knows, you good yeah, ideas. Yeah. yeah, who knows what will come out of wow. it. Yeah. How do you manage the logistics? I'm, I'm just imagining there must be a ton of yeah. complexities. That sounds like an Amazon yeah. for for spare Perfect. parts. Yeah. How do, how do you manage that? Yeah, okay, so I, I must say that we've also learned through the process um, and uh, sometimes that's why I think it's not really cool to um, expand like boom yeah. at once yeah. so it's a learning curve um, so we take it gradually so um, first of all when we started we didn't even have the means to have um, a vehicle uh, motorbikes for our logistics so basically what we were doing was that we pick the parts go through public transport wow. to get it to them. If the person is outside Accra, then we send it through one of the transport services and the person picks up. But as we got through the process, we learned, we corrected few mistakes here and there. And so it's become smoother. And so basically someone orders the parts, it gets to um, the guy managing the portal. He sends it across um, to our technical team on the field. They get the parts, the right specification. Then they hand over to our delivery team. Then our delivery team delivers. If it's in, I mean, within Accra, well, in Tema, we offer free delivery. And so they go deliver. Um, if it's a huge part, they use the van. If it's a small part, then they use a motorbike. Um, get it there and then issue a delivery notice to everyone and um, we all know that okay this part has been delivered if he received money payment on delivery then he notifies everyone on our system if um, the person paid via mobile money we also get to know yeah so wow. basically that's how we manage it wow <laughs> Do you, like, um, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like you know such a big industry and such a big potential yeah um where are you right now on this journey? Do you think, okay, you've solved the problem or is there still a long way to go? Okay, that's a very good question. So almost every single day when we have new people using our services, they go like, how long have you people been, been around? <laughs> they are so surprised there is a solution to their problem and they, they never knew. Yeah. And so I would say that um, yes, we've created a solution for those who know us. So, yeah. but on our journey, I think um, we are at this point where we want more people to know of our services. Yeah. And then, um, of course, then we would have more patrons. The next steps um, are to expand, be able to expand, 
be able to handle all the pressures that come with expansion yeah. and uh, be able to give everyone the wow effect we've given uh, our customers, our present customers. Wow, I love yeah. that. Yeah. And that I think leads to the next question because, yeah. um, you know, on the one hand you mentioned, and I know that very well from my own business, yeah. sometimes you need to take some time to learn the right lessons, to yeah. not expand a system that is not yet working. Yeah. But if you scale that, then it will bite you, come to bite you later. Exactly. But if you really tweak it until every customer gets a wow effect yeah. and that is can be profitable and you know exactly. your business model is validated, yeah. then you can scale. So yeah. my question would be, you know, how, how do you want to expand? Do you want to bring in investors or do you want to, you know, take it uh, one step at a time where people share this message and you reach out to uh, more people or? Okay, so um, basically this is what we're looking for. It's in two folds. First of all, um, we've approached a number of um, distributors outside Ghana who want to get their parts here. And we are saying that, okay, this is your go-to um, partner to get into Ghana. So if you have parts you want to introduce onto the Ghanaian market, see us, just like an Amazon will do would warehouse for you, sell it for you, and then we do whichever reconciliation we need to do afterwards. That's the first way we are looking at expanding or scaling. Then the other way is to have someone say that, okay, I have um, this money, I want to push into your business. And what we are looking at doing with that is basically to um, do advertisement marketing out there so that the people who keep saying that, oh, how long have you been around? <laughs> Everyone will see us around, I mean, yeah. basically, and then um, have more client, clients from there, yeah. basically. So these are the two ways we are looking at scaling. So it could be um, from a partner um, we can give um, audience to in the Ghanaian market, or it could be someone who really wants to invest money as the cash and yeah, marketing exactly, to expansion. help us with our marketing okay. and all. And if someone comes in as a partner, it would be to get like an ex a distribution for, for the Ghanaian market or investment. Yeah, market. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if um, today we have a number of countries producing spare parts, unfortunately, we don't produce here in Ghana. And so, yeah, we have a number of them producing spare parts. They need to push it across into different markets. And so we are there as a strategic partner. Okay, we, we come together. Everyone is getting to know us. So, yeah, we are your best bets, basically, yeah, wow. to get into the market. Did you always want to become an entrepreneur now, or how did you how did your journey start even to import cars? How does mm. one start to do that? I mean, you know, for I just imagine a young person, and you know, they they listen to your interview and say, "Wow, I'm maybe interested in cars and all this." But how do you start to get cars from the U.S.? That sounds like an expensive endeavor. How yeah. did you get that started? Okay, so um, basically, this has been my um, thinking line or pattern all along. I have always wanted to retire very early. Um, <laughs> not, I love to travel the world. And so my plan has been to, okay, get things working for you. And then after some time, when everything is set, you are free to travel the world. And so, yeah, that, that was the motivation. But, um, I also think that evaluating myself, I think um, I, I am really a serial entrepreneur. So I like doing a number of things together. Then I feel accomplished. If I'm telling someone that, okay, yeah, so now um, I do two consultancies. I mean, I consult for two companies. As a telecom engineer, I run three businesses on the side. Then I really feel like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy about that. So I think sometimes that is what also pushes me. And, um, and so what I basically do is to, yeah, put a business together, put in the structures for the business to run without me. Then I move on to the next thing, basically. But I have, I have had some challenges as well. Uh, where I started my car importation business with money I made from my consultancy around um, Africa. 
And uh, I also ventured into fish farming. Anytime I mention fish farming, <laughs> uh, I get sad. Because um, I, as it stands now, then it, it would be something around um, 20,000 euros. I sank it into my fish farm. Well, you literally sank it. <laughs> yeah, and farm. yes, I sank <laughs> it <laughs> into <laughs> the river. I really <laughs> sank it there, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, it was um, someone I trusted to manage my farm who didn't do the right thing. But yeah, it's part of the learning curve. And so, yeah, so I keep on, and I, I am also doing some farming somewhere in addition. So yeah, we keep on going yeah. till I can travel the world. Basically, uh, which, you are, which one has to say you're already doing, even in your activities as a consultant, yeah, and even delivering a spare part to Tema for exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, just a few learnings that I want to summarize mm. because I find them very, very valuable also for others. It's, I mean, you, you started with a clear picture in mind of how you want to live and how you want to set up your companies yeah. as well, and I think. Many people skip that step. They have a vision, mm. they have a, a mission, they're yeah. driven, they do great work. Yeah. But when we ask founders, oftentimes, how's your level of exhaustion? They mm. say very high. And mm. I think it's, um, you know, thinking, okay, I, I need to maybe, if I still want to have time, yeah. to also make time for my other dreams, yeah. besides helping uh, people, creating yeah. solutions, yeah. I need to set up systems. So yeah. I think that's yeah. one valuable uh, learning that I'm having there. And also, uh, you know, when you started your business, you just delivered one part. And I love that because for me, entrepreneurship was always, it's so complex when you never, yeah. when you haven't done anything because you think you need to set up the perfect thing. Yeah. But your start was about, no, we need to deliver one Our part to one, one person. Yeah. That is the start yeah. of any business. And yeah. then the other things will come step yeah. by step. And uh, I love that those shares. Yeah. But then you mentioned that, um, you have three businesses running yeah. and you told me about one project mm. where I read about it where you are providing additional services to mm. car owners yeah. in Ghana. Can you share more about that? Okay, great. So, um, so I thought, okay, as a car owner, um, if I want to keep my car running, there were too many people I needed to talk to. Needed to talk to my insurance company, needed to talk to my mechanic, I needed to talk to a towing guy if my car breaks down. I said, oh, come on, um, why not create this single platform that would have everyone sorted out? So it's more like the car owners go to app, you just go there. Anything about your car is sorted. And so, yes, um, that gave birth to the GH Auto Club. Um, so the idea was to get everyone happy on the platform. And so what we did basically was to get um, insurance companies, we, to get mechanics, to get um, towing services. In fact, um, we also had um, a spare parts financing service on that platform. And so if you, you are cut strapped and you need spare parts, then being a member of that auto club, you could access spare parts and pay at the end of the month when your employer would have made you smile and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll all be happy. Yeah, so that was how the GH Auto Club was back as wow. well. Yeah, and so that's also a service we run under Abosokai Online. Wow. Yeah. I'm really, you know, I'm really struck with uh, you as a person because it's really. I mean, it's amazing that no one has come up with these ideas before or started implementing them because it's very basic. So many yeah. people have cars yeah. and it's just a pain and you really look at that and say, well, you know, it's annoying. Let yeah. me let me solve that. Yeah. Other people just think it's annoying, complain, and yeah. go on with their life and suffer. Exactly. Uh, you, yes. you solve that. What, what led you to become a telco engineer and a consultant? What was your, what was your life before mm. uh, your car importation business okay great so um i was in the Kwame Nkrumah university of science and technology where i studied uh, electrical engineering and so all along in my uh, second year third year i really didn't know what i wanted to do 
But in the second semester of my third year, there was this project we did, um, switching in telecommunications. And after I did that course, and there was a mini project attached to it, after I did that project, I knew that I wanted to be a telecom engineer because I really fell in love with it. So maybe because of the practicality attached to it, we had to go to telecom companies and um, understand how they do their switching. So you make a call, how it gets to the other person. And so after that, I knew I wanted to be a telecom engineer. And so after my um, schooling, I had um, my national service at Millicom Ghana, Tigo, and um, it was actually earlier than everyone, I mean, because um, uh, national service was supposed to start in October, but for some reason we started in uh, August. And yeah, that was how I got into the telecom industry. And from there, because of my uh, drive and, uh, and all, in less than five months, I had gotten myself a job with a fully fledged telecom company. Okay. And so I moved there and um, they had to take me out of the country to um, um, intern for a while. Where, where did you, where did you uh, study or intern? In Nigeria. In Nigeria. By the time I was done with that, the internship, I came back to Ghana to work for them for a while. In less than two years, I already had my first consultancy project. Um, so, so that was freelancing, that was freelance, outside. Exactly. Of, okay. So yeah, the risk part of me being an entrepreneur pushed me to leave um, a full-time job to go into the world. Just pick a freelance job, which uh, was going to, it was paying really well um, because of course it, it was um, outside the country, but um, then it was um, renewed every three months. And so that was some kind of risk, a, a huge risk to have left a full-time job, take a three months job and hoping to be extended after three months. Yeah. And yeah, I ended up doing that for over a year and it launched me fully into consultancy. So yeah, after that, I have done that in um, a number of countries. Okay, wow. Yeah. How did, you, how did you import your first car? Okay. So I had to read a lot to understand what it means to import cars into the country and understand what it means to even acquire a, a car from a different country where you are not domiciled. And so basically I did a lot of reading and I realized that, oh, I, c I could be in Ghana and have an auction license in the States. Wow. Yeah, so then I got myself my first auction license and I had to read, know how the auction takes place because it's a very fast process. Your, your internet could just blink and by the time it comes back, the car has been sold. And so <laughs> <laughs> I really had to yes, yeah, set myself ready, read about it, get ready for my very first auction. So here was I <laughs> looking at cars going and I, I really didn't know which car I wanted to buy. So it was more like, okay, let's try this. Let's get the cheapest car, the cheapest car, but in a very good condition. Okay, so before I went through the list of cars and was looking out for, okay, so I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> Some of them went higher than I expected. And for some reason, there was this car I was trying to try my hands on. I didn't think I could get it. But funny enough, when I clicked on it to buy it, no one else responded. And um, I heard the auctioneer say, sold to the highest bidder. And I was the highest bidder wow. for that car. And it, it was quite cheap, I thought. And so I quickly did my calculations. Okay, so I, I could make this on it. And that started the How much, how much did you buy it for? Um, around $500 at the time. Wow. Um, a car that was selling somewhere around um, 3000 around $3,000 or $4,000. Here in Ghana? Here in Ghana. So I had to 
calculate my shipping expense and my duty customs expense and it looked like okay i could make um, some few dollars from here and that was how i started wow. yeah. that was your first car very here. first car yeah wow yeah i can imagine a lot of adrenaline sitting and, in a car lot. <laughs> if i when i won i was like okay is that it i mean this simple okay what if this car doesn't work if it comes i mean yeah you have the condition of the car and all but what if it doesn't really work and so yeah that anxiety and all yeah mixed together but yeah i mean it worked finally yeah exactly wow yeah did you always have an interest in cars and, and knew about cars or no no so um this is it if i pick on something to do what i just do is to read about it read a lot educate myself on it and then boom we zoom there wow. yeah so I, I have not been a fan of cars, um, no, not loved. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say I now love cars. I wouldn't really say. I would say that, okay, I've created a solution for cars and that wow. is it. We move on to the next solution. Wow. Yeah. That's quite powerful. Yeah. You know, also the, <laughs> because oftentimes we say, okay, we need to be driven by passion and all this, but mm. Maybe it's not true. Maybe it's uh, we need to be driven by curiosity and have the willingness to learn and yeah. dig deep to yeah. and understand that we can learn anything yeah. and master it even exactly if we if we get our hands on it that we learn on the way exactly and yeah I, I, I really <laughs> love that that you weren't even <laughs> passionate about it you just not at all. said okay yeah. it's a business opportunity yeah. let me try it and figure this out and learn it exactly. and read about it exactly anyone can do that and I, I need to apologize to all cars cars sorry I really don't have fun for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, basically, I just put myself to it, read, 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 read about it, ask questions, and then I try to get a solution for it, basically. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that, that goes against what we all know. Okay. You need to have passion and all. I, maybe I would say for me, I have passion for solutions. Yeah not necessarily a particular i mean for a particular industry but yeah. i just enjoy the fact that okay i've created a solution for it for this and people are using it and they are excited and i said oh wow yeah we did it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i can understand it's the yeah. passion for creating exactly the passion yeah even to work on your personal freedom I guess. yeah 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 are you yeah. are you able to travel the world now are you doing it yes so um because we didn't when i say we myself and my wife um we didn't want to wait till we were 70 to yeah start traveling the world so what we started doing was we were combining business and pleasure and so anytime we had to i had to sometimes i had to travel for work then she comes along with me and then after work we, we take like a week tour anywhere we have to tour and then we come back so most times you, you wouldn't see me going on a purely pleasurable trip yeah. it's more like i combine it with work yeah. yeah so i find something to do there yeah. work related and then we add uh, the nice. traveling traveling to it basically yeah so yeah. now i think uh, we've done like um 25 countries in all wow we're still going Wow. Yeah, yeah, and I'm you want to travel to... all the world, yeah. but you still have a few years to 70. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think that life um, has taught me not to be too expectant, is it? Yeah. So, yeah, we know that, yeah, we can have around 70 years to live, but we can also die at 40 yeah life is unpredictable and so yeah as much as um, we have time now we try to make the best of it and do what we can do leave the rest for later continue if we have the chance if we don't have the chance yeah we did it we we tried what we could yeah. do yeah you don't yeah. have to regret that you try to save everything, everything for, the for the end the last exactly yeah, yeah. exactly yeah wow yeah. But now what would be your advice to a young person in ghana today whoa um ghana has potential L let me be real with you ghana is quite frustrating yes we know but in all the mess um, we have a lot of potential so try to get some mess that has been created and get a solution for that mess 
and I mean, you would you would surely do it. So yeah, I I believe that we sh we are blessed because we have a lot more mess to be corrected, uh, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that share. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank Amazing you. interview. And yeah. Thanks for the inspiration. Thank you too.